TEDEP has been around for 10 years now. With the Malabo Declaration, the African heads of state and government have recommitted to those decisions made in Maputo quite some time ago. There are still looming issues on certain decisions and for that they have now commissioned the NPCA to come up with an implementation strategy and a roadmap. Now, one of the key issues that has always been looming as a, as a problem is the issue of roles and responsibilities of those various institutions involved in the implementation. And I know that you, Jeff, were one of those people that almost at every meeting pointed out to this issue, sort this out, who is having which role and which responsibility. What do you think? What's going to be different this time around? Yes, I do think that what is different right now is that we have a set of heads of state that uh, have asked the AUC to provide them with a plan about how they will actually support implementation. And that is requiring the setting up of actually a plan you know, that is endorsed by the organization of the AUC to be able to, um, you know, to be able to move forward. That's actually a really important step. Much of the cooperation that has taken place has really been, you know, through informal agreements. And now we are seeing a much greater concern for formalizing the agreements and formalizing what are the performance measures that people would be held accountable for. The Malibu Declaration is calling for much more specificity in terms of what actions are being called for uh, to implement this agenda. So um, we do see much greater clarity beginning to emerge in terms of what are the different actions and tasks that are, that are needed. Maybe you can give us a little example from these partnership platform meetings before. There were a number of institutions where people agreed to do certain things, but it was never really clear whether their sending organizations were really committed and whether those things would actually be done later on. Yes, I think that moving forward, it's going to be extremely important for the different organizations to be clear on what the commitment of the organization is. And that, it, and once that is actually clear, and you know, it is demonstrating alignment with the the um, the declaration objectives and targets. You know, then in fact, some formal agreements need to be established with you know the development partners, right, and others with the with the organization to you know put forward the concrete details of what they will do and how they will be able to do it. Right now, the, the modalities that are currently being used have not got the kind of specificity required you know, for holding either each other accountable or individually the different organizations accountable. When you look at the declaration, what are the most critical points to move on with? Well, I think that what is becoming clear you know, right now, and I think that what the roadmap that has been you know, developed to date is doing a good job of articulating that there are two core objectives that need to be given attention. One is an objective to actually facilitate and support technical change that will drive agricultural transformation and growth right, in a more comprehensive way. And there is much more clarity in terms of being um, what kind of technical change is being sought. Right? And that's extremely important Right, for being able to clarify, you know, what are the two or three technical areas that countries will be committing to so that they can make progress on those in the near term as well as the longer term. That's a, that's a very important, you know, focusing point. But the other objective is focused on identifying the system changes that will be required for making this work. For many years there's been this discussion about where is the capacity, where do you actually need to emphasize you know, strengthening systems, but now there is an increasing attention and focus on 
there are system changes that countries are being asked to take on like for example in the investment plan in a is a system change for example a mutual accountability is a system change for example they're being called on for putting in place a uh, a plan for improving coordination across you know ministries across partners across different groups and of constituencies that's a system change for being able to put in place the policy those are system changes and so i believe that that the system changes will actually be important in driving you know the success you know of uh, this agenda and as well as so these two areas of both the technical change required and the system changes that are required are in my opinion critically important do you see any organization that could bring about this necessary systems change to get things actually going? Or is that not part of the declaration? The roadmap and strategy do articulate that there are these seven system changes that they are asking be a focus. And that they are asking that there be uh, progress reported on every two years. So that the intent is to have a head of state accounting Right, that would be held at the summit, uh, where there would be an ask in terms of demonstrating what what change and what progress they've made in being uh, on these different areas. Right, and so uh, the biennial review that is being proposed is a is a new, pretty powerful tool if done well, you know, to bring um, you know some discipline to this process. I want to round it off with another question on the roles and responsibilities. I just interviewed Esrin Fotobong of NEPAD, and she acknowledges that there is an issue with the roles and responsibilities on the side of the African partners. But she also seems to point back a little bit at the donors, saying that they should be looking at their various roles and responsibilities as well. Do you have maybe something to say about that? Yeah, I think that uh, that's, uh, you know, I hope that Esther is doing well and that uh, she's going to enjoy the holidays here, but we are, you know, I think that needing to focus on a key issue. We, the development partners, need to actually have a framing of where it is that we can and should be able to actually align with the agendas that they are committed to. And right now, it is critically important for each of the different organizations to clarify what that organization and its leadership is committed to. And that it is around that that we will be able to then put in place processes to discipline how we as development partners are able to align with and support those efforts. And that we do, in fact, uh, welcome the opportunity for having discussions of alignment. But on this issue, leadership is truly required from the African leaders. If you look at the separation of work between the donors, so the vertical issue, if you will, that's not all. There's also a horizontal thing. The cascading down of work issues from donor headquarters to the country level. And that doesn't seem to be working all that well, as we know. Why do you think is that so difficult? I think that there is a great interest and concern with implementation. And very quickly, people, they want to believe that implementation means delivery of services and decisions at a local level where the, the ultimate beneficiaries are directly impacted. There isn't a great appreciation that, in fact, implementation you know, it does include and require action at um, a multinational level, you know, to put in place an enabling environment that does allow those that work taking place at the country and local level to operate more effectively and efficiently. And that, so the, the types of tasks, the types of roles, you know, that are being called on for a, uh, a cross-country effort or a, a continent-wide effort you know, are oftentimes confused and it is, you know, people do not necessarily have a lot of experience with being able, you know, to clarify those roles and they're quickly jumped to implementation means delivery of services at a local level. And um, I think that, you know, there is a, there is a maturing and a growing experience on that, but uh, it's also clear that, you know, at a continental level, the, the, the mandate is not to handle implementation. Right. Yeah. Heads of state have issued very clear instructions.
instructions that continental organizations are not responsible for implementation they need to support they need to create an enabling environment they need to help create partnerships right and accountability right they don't handle implementation do you maybe think it has something to do with the approach with trying to capture the whole complexity of an issue and not trying to go along with a real strategy trying to focus on one thing and get going with that first i think the you know the you know at the heart of it is this whole common understanding of what is subsidiarity and people often use the word without really thinking about what that means right but i do think that being able to make progress i mean i believe that both country leaders right um, as well as development agency leaders you know are concerned about seeing progress be made And, I, and real results, you know, on the ground. And I think that doing that is going to require some focus, right? And it does require identifying, you know, several areas, you know, that um, can benefit and offer the opportunity for really making progress if there is a focusing in on them and taking those issues to scale. So, I mean, I do think that the point of, of narrowing the discussion to two or three areas of of uh, real opportunity is, is critically important. You've been with the Development Partners Task Team for quite some time now, so you have quite a nice overview of what's been tried already and what should maybe be done next. What is your wish? What should be done in the next term to really get going on things? Well, the Development Partners really need to be able to constructively respond to the call from the heads of state in the Malibu Declaration to make progress on alignment of the various efforts with the common agenda that they have articulated. And we, to do that, we need to be able to actually have some common principles, right, at a continental, at a regional, and at a country level, where we are aligned with moving forward the different technical priorities and the, and the commitments to system change. And I think that understanding and uh, looking at those issues um, and being able to uh, identify how we can, we can do that is critically important. Thank you.